Lucky me, I'm in the foothills of the Cobor Ranges in Victoria's Macedon region. This place I'm so excited about because it's an absolute haven of hidden creative talent and home to ceramicist Emma Jimson. The whole place is surrounded by granite formations and look at this spectacular lavender farm. It's really easy to see where she draws her inspiration from. much about you. And uh, likewise. Oh, let me shut Welcome. this door. Come on in. It's a bit fresh out there. How long have you lived here? We've been here nine years now. Oh my gosh. From the city? Yes. Big sea change? It's big. Because to but me, wonderful. I think it would be the most perfect thing. Just grab my kids and off into the bush and just live the quiet life. So obviously you have that side of it. Yes. So what's so good about life in the country? You get to see the seasons here. You get to really feel them. And you're living much more with the elements, I think, than when you're in the city. Does it influence your work? Massively. Yeah. I can't help but be influenced. And when I look out there and I see, I see all the forms and, and the shapes and the textures and the colours, it's, it's just beautiful. beautiful. Now, I've been told that you're not just a decorative ceramicist. Your things are functional, they're practical and they're beautiful. That's my aim. Yeah. That's definitely my aim. Um, I love to be able to create things uh, that you can use in the everyday. But, uh, my, my real passion is the fermenting side of things, mm. so to create vessels to be able to ferment in. This is the first one that I, that I made, the sauerkraut crock. Gosh, that's an amazing colour, colour isn't it's it? It's beautiful. So this one's got an aerated lid? It does, it does. So this is, this is for kombucha. Wow, the word of the moment. This one was third in line to make and it's got kimchi inside there. Wow. I feel like I need to get my hands dirty and do something. You want to come up to the studio and make something? I would love to. Fabulous. First though, we need to go and find something out in the paddock that we can Perfect. I love to in. forage. Okay. Right, we'll I'm going to get my coat and off we go. We'll go and forage. <laughs> Watch me end up in the dam. <laughs> <laughs> they could happen. Let's not do that. This here is a kangaroo grass. It's sculptural, it's beautiful, it's got gorgeous wisps on it. I love that you see the beauty in everything around you. It's so nice. All right. Welcome oh, to the studio. I love it. It's, oh, it's so good. Emma uses a wide variety of techniques. This one in particular is called a hump mould. So it's made out of plaster. Uh -huh. You can make it to any shape that you want. And the difference with this process is that we use a slab of clay that we then drape over. Of course, hence the name Hump. Hence the name it's, Hump. I love hump. this in itself. It's just like a big tablet. It's beautiful. So, final cut. That's an amazing tool. Ta-da! So, we take our slab of clay and we're just going to roll it out a little bit more. So, now we get to choose which one of these we want to put in. It's a bit of positioning here mm -hmm. of where we want it to actually be on our plate. I want it sort of off to the side. Mm -hmm. And it's just a matter of gently rolling. And then we can peel it out. The detail in that, it's just amazing. Picks up every little bit. So we now need to drape it over our mold. Mm -hmm. We're going to pick it up. Oh, that's the scary bit. Lay it on. So now we can just gently shape and form the clay to the hump mould underneath. So usually at this point in the process, I'd leave it to firm up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, the clay just has a way of humbling you. Mm. Um, and there's an unpredictability to it. So you don't know if sometimes a glaze is not going to work or something happens in the kiln, so there are plenty of pieces that end up as seconds in the family home. <laughs> in the which cupboard. is great. Your yeah. kids would be like, Mum, why don't we have good dinner plates? We've got all the off-casts. <laughs> so once it's had its time to form over here, to firm up a little bit so that it's going to hold its shape, we've trimmed off the edges and now we get to pop it off. Look at that. That's so Look beautiful. At that. And I love the way that the grass has come through the side there. Yeah, fabulous. 
So at this stage, it's still really impressionable. Mm -hmm. We want to treat it really gently. Mm -hmm. It's going to now sit on this shelf and dry until it is bone dry mm -hmm. and then go into the kiln for its first firing. When it comes out, it's going to look like this. It's a really different feel. It's amazing. So how has this gone dark? So yeah. what happens between bone dry and going in the kiln is yeah. we're going to put a bit of stain in it. Oh, and perfect. that stain is really just going to highlight all of those little beautiful details. That will then get glazed uh -huh. and it's going to go back in the kiln up to 1280. Wow. What a and process. Then we end up with this. It's such a beautiful thing. It's so tactile. It love is. It. it is. I just love it. Oh, gosh, you're clever. Perfect weather for soup, right? <laughs> Isn't it just? It's amazing. Not only are you the most incredible lady and ceramicist, but you're a great cook too. Oh, thank you. Fabulous. This must be such a proud moment when you can put food on the plates you make. It is. It is. It's wonderful. And to have people share it with you, it's even better. So good. Thank you. Thank you for the day. You it's are just so been welcome. So good. Thank you for coming. What's not to love here, huh? Enjoy. Oh. So good.